So I was not expecting to make a video on this, but I guess I had to. I listed this video on Notion on 10th January and coincidentally, Theo from TG.GG released a video about Bootstrap on January 13th. So just go and watch his video. I guess that's it for today. I have nothing to say. Uh, have a good day. Peace. Nah, just kidding. Let's talk about Bootstrap. Well, if you don't know, I'm currently taking a course on full stack development with Mern in a company and I don't want to disclose the name. So in our syllabus, we have a section for HTML, CSS and Bootstrap. You know how much I adore Tailwind. And being a Next.js developer, I started using Shad CNUI and Next.UI for most of my time. So I never wrote a single line of raw CSS and Bootstrap ever. Yeah, it might seem a bit weird, but my first used web development command was npx create next app and not create react app. As weird as it may seem theme but it kind of worked for me. Currently it's fine for me to write raw CSS, I mean it is just tailwind in details but oh god I hate bootstrap. First of all, somebody once told me that styling UIs with bootstrap just looks too much bootstrappy. I don't know if that made sense or not but I kind of felt that too. It would have ended there but bro, I hate class based components. First of all, I always run out of new class names and now for some reason if bootstrap doesn't provide me the type of component I need and I use a different library to get that and for some weird reason if the classes clash. God, it's a huge pain in the ass. That kind of rhymed but yeah, who cares. Now second, I'm just gonna give you a quick tour on NextUI and ShadCN UI. So let's go. So this is the UI library that I use in most of my projects. It's been used in Post-it, my own portfolio and the upcoming social media that we are making, PureAmp. So what I like about it is you can just go to the components. We have the whole documentation section over here. Well, they actually added some new components like autocomplete, breadcrumbs and a slider. I don't know why didn't they had a slider before, but so what I like about these components is just let's go to the button. Just look at this awesome animation. I'm just going to click it and have a look at this awesome water droplet thing kind of animation. And I fell in love with this one. Now, besides, we also have some sizes like small, medium, large with some radius thing. Now we have different colors too default primary secondary success warning danger and maybe some variants with solid faded bordered lights and so on custom loading states for this one with icons you can have icons your own customized icons with just one end content property and that's it all you have to just pass it is this end content and the icon you can also have this button says icon only with custom styles you can have your own custom styles they have beautiful documented this over here with button props button events every event that counts uh, with button group props you can actually group them like this now that that's all about only buttons, but we have too many components over here. For example, they have built in nav bar. How cool is that? So I believe this one is also responsive, which it really is. You can have hide and scroll effect. So if you actually scroll down, the nav bar hides and if you actually go up, it comes back and with mobile menu. So we have this one only visible on the mobile screen. If we actually enlarge it, it's just gone. And now on the other hand, we have bootstrap. So if I just go to button, for example, buttons, this looks too, I, I don't know how to explain this one, but it's just too bootstrappy. I don't know. There is nothing special, no animations. I, I mean, I get it. It's just for normal raw HTML and CSS. And you cannot get all the properties of Framer Motion or other animation libraries. I get it. But still, it's so boring. And even if I go to ui.chatscene.com. Oh, wait a minute. They changed this one. Oh, that is actually. Oh. Just go to the button and this is a normal button with like nothing added. Now you can have variants, secondary, distractive, they have the outline one, another one with the ghost one. I mean this is way better than the bootstrap ones. I mean this looks so boring, I don't know why. I mean you can still make it out but well I guess they actually added a loading animation for this one. They didn't have this previously. Now we all know why people like to use bootstrap is because the carousel. Because for some reason people still like the bootstrap carousel and I don't know why. So it's like this boring weird animation with like no thumb effect. Uh, I guess you cannot use it in mobile screen if I'm not wrong. Yeah, you cannot. You have to like click on these buttons. Uh, do you have any other ones? Recently, Shadsian actually introduced a carousel component, which is way better. So this one is thumb responsive. You can just click and drag left or right. You can use these buttons if you want. They have multiple examples with this one. For example, you can have grouping components with one, two, three. You can change the spacing between them. And also you have this orientation thing with the horizontal and vertical. Now the fact is it is actually built on top of Embla. I don't know how to actually pronounce this one, but it is made on top of Embla carousel. So for example, we have the loop one that just goes on forever. And my favorite one, the thumbnails, where you can actually scroll this one along with this one, which is way better. 
uh, the parallax effect, this uh, weird parallax thing, so the scale effect, and finally the opacity effect. And by the way, there is a live example of using the carousel that I made recently on this site. You can just visit this music section and we have the awesome carousel. Like you can just uh, drag it left to right and it is actually looped, so infinitely looped. And you can click this button to like manually go by left or right, who okay. cares. So one in this music section and a second one in this video section. Instead of having carousels, we have another component in chat scene. So we have the drawer, the new component that was added recently. It is actually better for mobile views. I mean, this is way better than having a model, right? So for example, if I had to use it in larger windows, I would use the normal model component. And for smaller windows like mobile devices, I would use the drawer component. Now we have the new pagination component added, but I believe the pagination of next year is better than this one, which is this one with great animations like the shift animation from two to three or three to two. We have this awesome resizable component. I mean, this, uh, this one just blew my mind. I do get it that if you are using raw HTML CSS, it is like necessary for you to use Bootstrap or maybe if not Bootstrap, you can use Tailwind and Tailwind components. I believe they support raw HTML CSS, but if you're not using, because in my course, I was actually told that I would be using React, like React, if not React next uh, with Bootstrap. And I was like, what? Why would we learn Bootstrap instead of learning Tailwind when Next.js natively supports Tailwind? I was like, why? Now I'm not criticizing any company or institutions that are teaching new devs about Next.js, React or maybe full stack development. But I believe it would be better if we actually keep us updated with the cutting edge technology, if not cutting edge, at least latest, because it's been years Tailwind was released. I don't just see the point of not learning Tailwind and just keep learning Bootstrap. And also for styling with CSS, I, I believe Tailwind is a better option. Now I know there are people that actually hate Tailwind and I get the reason. There are like huge, huge pile of classes in a single component. Yes, I have done it too. I have faced that too. Please don't use Bootstrap in 2024. I don't know why people are actually even using it, even, even talking about it. So I just had this thought in my mind. I guess that's it for the video. I have a new video coming about setting up TRPC on the Next.js app router. Uh, this should be up by next week, I believe. And thank you. Peace.